If you're watching this video, that means that you've already diagnosed that your footwear module needs repairing. Now, in order to get the footwear module out, you can have a look at my previous video. To open this module up, it's held together by four clips. There's one here, so I'm going to unclip that one. And then there's another clip here. There are two more clips on the back, here and here. So let's unclip them as well so that we can get access to the board. So once you open these up, you will have access to the main microprocessor unit. As you can see on here, it says XE Q384 with a mask of 3M25J. We'll need this in a minute. So in order to repair it, we need to get the BDM adapter from XPROG. You need to hook up the adapter to the XPROG box itself. And then you need to wire this cable onto the board in this manner. So VCC, VDD, reset, ground and background. I've wired up my board up in this, according to the diagram that I showed earlier and hooked it up to the X Sprog and have installed the software onto the PC and now I'm going to open up the X Sprog software. The first thing we will have to do is click on devices and then find click on MCU slash MPU, go down to freescale. 9S12XE and then from here select the 9S12XE Q384 D flash. So we're going to be using a D flash to repair the EEP ROM. Click OK. Before we click read, we need to click on new and now we can press read and it should read it. The problem I had here was that I couldn't read anything from the board and the reason for that was because the drivers weren't installed correctly uh, I was using a virtual machine so what I had to do then was to dig out an old laptop with Windows XP on it so now I'm going to try the same thing on my old laptop and see how it goes so I plugged in my old laptop as you can see at least it's recognizing and reading it now the second problem that I experienced was some of the newer Xprogs had the VCC and VDD power to the board was slightly different. So I had to desolder the wire for VCC and solder the VDD wire on it. And that then ensured that the power was then coming to the board and I could then read the data from it. Once you've done that and you can read the data, you need to save the D flash file because you'll need it in a minute. Once you've saved the D flash file, you can do that by just clicking File Save As. Now, with the Save D flash file, go to this website. I'll put it in the comments below. And you need to use this file and convert this file into an EEP ROM. Now, with the saved EEP ROM file, open it up and back up into Xprog. Then go to Devices again. And this time around, select 9S12XEQ384EEE and click OK. We need to erase what's already on the device and reflash it. So in order to do that, what you'll see here is this number here needs to be set to 16. I'm going to leave it at zero and show you what happens if you don't. So the program is going to try to flash this onto an area with zero flash memory. So when you go to write the file it will write to zero which means that when it goes back to read it again it will have nothing on it quite basic so that means you must ensure that it is set to 16 when you raise before i plug it back in and do everything i thought i'd just test to see if it's working correctly so i've just wired it back up again just the board itself to the car and now i'm going to turn on the car just to see if it's working correctly so, turning the car on, so far so good, I haven't got 
any errors coming up. The lights working? Yes, they are. They're they're okay. Um, the windows. They are also now operational, which is good. This was one of the main things. Let's see if we can. Let's try putting it into reverse gear. See if that's working. Yep, that's working as well. Let's try some of the indicators. Yep, they're working. High beams. Yep, they're working as well. There you go. So I think we have fixed it. So now what I'm going to do is box it back up again and put it back into the car. And that will be it.